no matter what you're going through, I know that you can stand, for your life is in, in His name. Lord God, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for bringing us through the night, Lord Jesus. God, somebody didn't get up this morning, but we did, Lord God, and we have our faculties. God, and we can see this morning, and we're breathing. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. God, I just uh, place marriages before you today, Lord God. All, all of those, Lord God, who are making it happen, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you. Um, for how husbands are loving their wives and wives are submitting, Lord Jesus. God, and how you're giving an understanding, Lord God. I thank you for the love, Lord Jesus, that we see and the examples that we see in our church, Lord God. I bless you for them. God, I thank you for the pathways, Lord God, and how you show their hands how to fight, Lord God, and how they war in the spirit for one another. God, I thank you for the ministry of reconciliation, Lord God, how you're bringing hearts back. Lord Jesus, you, you know exactly what it is that we need. You know exactly what it is that they stand in need of, Lord God. So I just ask that you bless every household, God, and every marriage that it represents who you are to the church, Lord God. I thank you uh, for this time, Lord Jesus. I bless you for this devotional hour, Lord God, and I give you all the glory and I give you all the praise. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Thank God and amen. to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church in Centrea. I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of his people and to give her any help she may need from you, for she has been the benefactor of many people, including me. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus. They risked their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. Greet also the church that meets at their house. Greet my dear friend Epinetus, who was the first convert to Christ in the province of Asia. Greet Mary, who worked very hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow Jews who have been in prison with me. They are outstanding among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampliatus, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my dear friend Stachus. Greet Apelles, whose fidelity to Christ has stood the test. Greet those who belong to the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my fellow Jew. Greet those in the household of Narcissus who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, those women who work hard in the Lord. Greet my dear friend Persis, another woman who has worked very hard in the Lord. 
Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord and his mother, who has been a mother to me too. Greet Insyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobus, Hermas, and the other brothers and sisters with them. Greet Philologus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the Lord's people who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ send greetings. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them, for such people are not serving our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. Everyone has heard about your obedience, so I rejoice because of you. But I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Timothy, my co-worker, sends his greetings to you, as do Lucius, Jason, and Sisypiter, my fellow Jews. I, Tertius, who wrote down this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, whose hospitality I and the whole church here enjoy, sends you his greetings. Erastus, who is the city's director of public works, and our brother, Quartus, send you their greetings. Now to him who is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ, in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all the Gentiles might come to faith and obedience. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ.
Another version of that says, let God be true and every man a liar. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 says this, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. So whatever God says about anything is the truth about whatever I'm looking at. No matter how I feel about it and no matter what I experience, God, what God says about it is the ultimate truth. Is anybody with me? So we put on the belt of truth and we interpret our experiences. We interpret our thoughts. We interpret our feelings, not based upon how we feel or think. We interpret our experiences and our thoughts and our emotions. We determine and we interpret all of that stuff from the basis of what God has to say about it. Everybody with me? Here we go. You put that on, you never take it off. Number two, you put on the breastplate of righteousness. Breastplate of righteousness. A. Righteousness is what is acceptable in the eyes of God. And it's based on knowing the truth about what God said about something. Righteousness is what is acceptable in the eyes of God. B, we must put on righteousness because if unrighteousness exists, we invite demonic influence in our lives. If, if unrighteousness exists, we invite demonic influence into our lives. Write this down, this will help you. Matter of fact, you can tweak this or post this. The devil shows up where he's invited. The devil shows up where he's invited. The Bible says, be angry and yet do not sin. And do not let the sun go down on your wrath and give the devil an opportunity. So in other words, if I'm mad at you, if I'm angry at you, if I can't stand you, and I, and listen, and I reject the scripture that says that within a good 24 hour period, we need to work this out. If I'm waiting on you to come to me and you waiting on me to come to you and we never come to each other because we waiting on each other, then what happens is that environment and scenario gives the devil a foothold. He, he opens the door and he walks right in. Why? Because time doesn't fix anything. Time actually makes things worse. And so, you ain't got to worship the devil to have him in your life. All you got to do is, all you got to do is live your life in such a way where he feels invited. All right, here we go. Number three, I must put on the shoes of peace. The shoes of peace, number three. <clears throat> we must put on shoes of peace because we're walking in a war zone. B, peace comes from truth and righteousness. <laughs> and so, it's impossible to have peace without truth. Why? Because you can't trust nothing. And it's impossible to have peace, with peace without righteousness. Why? Because you'll constantly be at odds with God. And so peace comes from both truth and righteousness. See, peace is the ability to be stable in the middle of everything. That's peace. Peace is the ability to be stable in the middle of everything. Now, the verb changes right here, and the verb changes, and it's no longer put this on and keep it on. This is take it up when you need it. He says this, take up the shield of faith. Take up the shield of faith. Now, someone would say, don't I need faith all the time? No. Nope. You only need it at certain times. How do you know? That's what the text says. It says, take it up when you need it. And he says this. But when he describes it, he says, he says, take up the shield of faith so that you can guard against the flaming arrows of the, in of the evil one. Now, the question is, why not just an arrow. Why a flaming arrow? Because the devil knows something that we don't know. If you ever watch old movies, Cowboys and Indians, yeah, the Cowboys had covered wagons with all their stuff in it. And they're moseying across the plains. And they run across some Indians. And the Indians learned a long time ago dealing with uh, uh, the colonizers. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, 
I had to throw a little Black Panther in there. So, so the Indians learned something dealing with them a long time ago. And what the Indians learned was arrows against guns is no match. So what the Indians did is they would go up in the rocks. And when the caravans were passing by, they would take their arrows, wrap a fabric around it, dip it in oil, set it on fire, and they would sit up in the, in the rocks And they would fire this flaming arrow, watch this, never intended to hit a cowboy. The purpose of the flaming arrow was to hit the cowboy stuff. So when the cowboy stuff started catching on fire, what the Indians knew is that cowboys can't fight Indians and fires at the same time. So the devil has some flaming arrows and he's, fl he's flinging them, he's hiding himself and he's flinging them into your life and his goal is never to hit you. But what he wants to do is he wants to throw an arrow, boom, and he wants to hit your job. And what he wants to do is hit your kids. And what he wants to do is hit your finances. And what he wants to do is hit your health. And what he wants to do is hit your family. And what he wants to do is hit your marriage. Because he knows that you cannot fight him and fight fires at the same time. And the goal is the goal of distraction. And so when you start to see your stuff on fire, don't get, listen, don't get sidetracked and try to save all your stuff. You can save your stuff but lose your soul because you cannot defend yourself against the one who's firing the flaming arrows. Forget about your stuff and worry about the enemy because the same God that gave you the stuff on fire is the same God who can replace it when the... Ah, he can replace it. It's replaceable. It's replaceable. So much of our lives, we're running around trying to put out a fire here and a fire here. And you're running over here trying to take care of this. And you got people who want you over here and everybody calling you and everybody wants some money and everybody. And he's like, look, sit down, shut up. I'm, I'm focused on my relationship with God and I'm focused on fighting this enemy. Nobody stopping my shine. They try to break me, try to take me out, but I got Jesus on my side. Feel so bad, I thought I would die. 